my beloved brethren, most respected elders, mothers and sisters, if you were to imagine two young people, two people, two persons, and as an elder, you give them a thousand pounds each. You say, here, take a thousand pounds, and you take a thousand pounds, and go and spend it as you like. Ifal ma shi'at, do as you please. Buy whatever you want, you know, eat whatever you want, ride whatever you want, but when the money finishes, when the currency expires, when the funds run out, come back to me and tell me what you did with the money that I gave you to spend. So the two go, and sometimes later they come back. So you ask one, you say, sweetheart, what did you do with the thousand pounds I gave you? So he says, I bought chewing gum. So you say, good, what else did you do? He says, no. I gave the shopkeeper a thousand pounds. He gave me chewing gum. So you go, a thousand pounds and chewing gum. Kid, there's something wrong with you. You know, has a snake bit your head? What happened? You, a thousand pounds and you bought bubble gum. To your head, you think, Miskeen, you know, he's got a few screws loose upstairs. It's, the calculations aren't working well for him. And then sometimes later, this other person comes, the other young lad, and you say, young man, you know, sweetheart, what did you do with the, with the thousand pounds I gave you? So he says, I bought a Mercedes Benz 2016. So you go, you financed it? He goes, no. I took the money, bargained with the person, negotiated, wheeled and dealed until he was happy to give me the merc for a thousand pounds. So in your eyes, the child grows in respect. You go, subhanallah, you're, you're intelligent. You're a sharp head. You're, you're a businessman. You know how to bargain. You gave something small and got something big. By the same token, Allah Rabbul Izza gave me and you a currency and He called it life. Live as you want. When it finishes, come back and tell me how you spent it. Did you buy Jannah or did you buy Jahannam? And life starts as in where you become alive, according to the Sahih, uh, the Hadith of Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, after 120 days after inception, ruh comes into the fetus. You become alive. From that time on, you're born into the world. You live, you strive, you struggle, you work, you get married, you... All of those is a test. Qala subhana, Alladhi khalaqa al-mawta wal-hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala. The one who created death and life to test you, examine you, trial you, to see which one of you will come with the best of deeds. قال تعالى وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ And I will test you with different aspects بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ with a bit of fear وَالْجُوعِ and hunger and loss وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ and loss of uh, materials and property and, and personnel and people and at the end وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Give glad tidings to those that bore the tests patiently. Do you see that life in its entirety is a test? Life is a test. 
At the end of this test, you go to your master to account for what you did. How did you spend the currency that Allah Rabbul Izzah gave you? And Fudayl ibn Iyad rahimahullah ta'ala was one of the righteous of the Salaf that passed us. He saw a man, elderly man. So he asked him, he said, how old are you? So the uncle said, he said, I'm 60 years old. So Fudayl said, so for 60 years you've been journeying towards your Lord. Because you're going to the meeting of your Lord, yeah? So for 60 years you've been journeying to meet your Lord, waiting to reach your destination. So the man realized, can you imagine 60? So 60 years have passed. There's a little bit left ahead of you. You don't know when the Ajal will come. So he thought back. You know, when you retrospect, you look back. As the point of Safri Ba'idun Wazadi Len Yubaligani, Wakuwati Da'ufat, Wal Motu Yatulubuni, Wali Bakaya Zunu Billas to Alamuha, Allah who Yalamuha, Fisri Wal Alani. My, my journey is long to the meeting of my Lord, Safri Ba'id, and my preparation so little and my strength has gone weak, old age has come, and death is chasing after me. And I have all these sins left. No one knows it except for my Lord. How often, how many sins, subhanallah, and Allah is halim. How much do you sin and Allah covers? Imagine he removed the cover wa Rabbul Kaaba. If Allah were to show, show our insides, outsides, you wouldn't say salam to each other. So, you go, yeah, saf, so now the man that Fudayl is talking to, he looks, not physically, you know, metaphorically, looks back. And he said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Do you know when you say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un? When a calamity strikes. So calamity, 60 years have passed. So he said, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. So Fudayl said, do you know what it means? This Inna lillah. Listen to it. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We are the property of Allah. We belong to Allah. And to Allah we will return. So he said, do you know what it means? That I belong to a sovereign. And to that sovereign I will return. He said, yes, it means I belong to Allah. And I will return to Allah. So he said, if you know that you are the milk of Allah. You know, you are the property of Allah. And that you will return to your owner. You must also know that the owner will question. So what have you prepared for the questioning of your Lord? So the man cried. You see, the Salaf spoke different. He cried. So he goes, well, it's difficult. Like the realization has come, you know, they came to Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Um, the Salaf of the Ummah used to, you know, uh, they didn't involve in poetry too much, yet they had the linguistic capability to get involved if they wanted to. Um, so Imam Ahmad used to, you know, skip in the ilm and did not get involved in, in, in the poetry. So a person came to him and he said, Imam, I have prepared a poem. I want to recite it to you. you Tell me what, you know, what you think. And this is the poem he recited. And Imam, they say Imam Ahmed cried until his beard was wet. And it goes like this. إِذَا مَا قَالَ لِي رَبِّي أَمَسْتَحْيَيْتَ تَعْصِينِي 
and when my Lord and if my Lord were to ask me, weren't you embarrassed when you used to disobey me? When you used to hide your sins from people and with your sins you came to me. Can you imagine? When what will I say if my Lord were to ask me? Didn't you feel embarrassed when you used to sin against me? And you hid your sins from people and yet you are not ashamed of me. Can you imagine a young lad sitting in front of a computer sinning? He's locked the door. He's shut the gate. He's alone in front of that. He's hiding from mom, dad, uncle, auntie, relatives, yeah? But the one that owns everything, he is not shy of that. Allah sees everything. So he goes, أَمَسْتَحْيَيْتَ تَعْصِينِي Didn't you have any haya when you used to disobey me? وَتُخْفِ الذَّنْبَ عَنْ خَلْقِي And you hid your sins from my creation. وَبِلْعِصْيَانِ تَأْتِينِي And with your sins you came to me. فَكَيْفَ أُجِيبُ يَا وَيْحِي وَوْ بِيَانْ تُو مِي وَتْ وُلْ بِي مَيْ أَنْسَى How will I respond to my Lord? What will I say? I used to trick myself with fake hopes. I will live till I am 60. How many of you died at 20? I will go to Hajj five years from now. Fake hopes. تصلي النفس بالآمال من حين إلى حين. Just prolonging. The hair grays, the beard grays. You know, you pluck it or you dye it or, you know, you cut it or you shave it, because you don't want to face reality that it's coming. Death is coming. And then he says, وجاءت سكرة الموت الشديدة من سيحميني. And then finally one day will come, Subhan al-Khaliq, فَبَصَرُكَ لِيَوْمَ حَدِيدٍ Where the eyes pierce like the blade, meaning they pierce the hijab between our world and the next. You sit and you see the angel coming. You know, I've, because of where we are in the community, people tell you certain stories. Uh, an elderly person died in our part, a righteous man. May Allah grant him Jannah. Um, he was on his deathbed and his family is around him. And then they say, he said, uh, son, make way for the guests. So they said, dad, there's, there's no guests. So he said, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. The guests came and the guests took him. My younger cousin, 24 years old, she passed away from cancer. Fajr time. Uh, she said, Mom, Dad, give me my scarf. I want to pray Fajr. The last days, last moments. And then as they came to put the scarf, she said, there's no time. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Hadid. Eyes that day piercing. And you see the eyes fixate because they fixate on a world that you do not see. So, when... When the reality comes, وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ الشَّدِيدَةُ مَنْ سَيَحْمِينِ The pangs of death is coming. Who will help me? So the poet says, نَظَرْتُ إِلَى الْوُجُوهِ I looked at the faces around me. Who is around? Your son, your brother, your nephew, your niece, your wife, your daughter. I looked at the faces. Who will ransom me? You know, who will bear the death in my place? Who will say, I will take the... No one. 
When death comes, your dearest, nearest are the first ones that put sand on you. So, the man realized, so he said, Wallahi, it is difficult. To Fudayl ibn Iyad. So Fudayl said, no, it is easy. Live the rest of your life in the obedience of Allah Rabbul Izzah. Allah will forgive you your sins and change the bad deeds into good deeds. Huh? Allah will for remember this a tawbah that is accepted. A tawbah that is accepted. Allah doesn't only forgive, He changed the sayyat into hasanat. The verses in the Quran, this is, you know, we, we don't speak without dalil. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ And don't ever take a life that Allah has made sacred except in the path of justice, as in except where a legal body, as in a judicial system, orders the execution of someone. Without that, don't ever take a sacred life. وَلَا تَزْنُونَ And never commit adultery. وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَ أَثَامًا Whoever does this, he will fall into sin. يُضَاعَفُ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ The punishment and the azab will be piled upon him on the day of judgment. وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهِ مُهَانًا And he will be there for eternity. And then the conditional clause. إِلَّا Except. So he's... he's committed the wrong, he's done the zina, and he's done the, 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 you know, the capital crimes. But then he found tawbah. So the Quran says, illa man tab. Except for the one who makes tawbah. Wa amana, wa amila amalan saliha, and believes and follows that sin with good deeds. Fa'ulaika يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ For those people, Allah will transfer their bad deeds into good deeds. So, I, uh, my brothers, I along with you, let's introspect for a second and decide in this jalsa, insha'Allah ta'ala, and may Allah make it mubarak and maqbool, that, Ya Rabb, today, in this one, in this gathering, I have left my sins. I walk out of it, and you turn my sayyat into hasanat. وَمَا ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ بِعَزِيز This isn't something difficult to Allah Rabbu Al-Izza. The, the hadith, the one who forgives the sins, وَلَا يُبَالِي And he doesn't even care. Make the intention, my dear brothers, my younger brothers, my say, Ya Rabb, whatever I have done in the past, you know and I know. But today, in humility and in humbleness, I come, Ya Rabb, forgive the sins. Ya Rabb, give me the strength to come out of it. Ya Rabb, give me a true tawbah so I don't return to it. And if Allah accepts and He is the one who accepts tawbah, then you're successful. In the hadith, in the day of judgment, a person comes for his, you know, the accounts are presented. So Allah Rabbul Izzah tells the angels, He says, remove the big sins from the, from the records, from the scrolls, from, remove it. So the major sins are removed. So He looks at the other sins. In 99 sigil, each, you know, scrolls, each so far as the eye can see. And in e he, he doesn't have a good deed, it's all sins. All sins. So, he comes to the Lord of honor and grandeur. And his, his, his account is like that. So he thinks he's doomed. 
So Allah Rabbul Izzah in one of the hadith, this is called hadith bitaqa, the hadith of the parchment. So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, my servant, we also have a good deed recorded in your name. The one I was telling you about, I will finish that hadith first. The one where all the bad, the major deeds have been removed. So this person sees that all the my, so my, Allah Rabbul Izzah says, my servant, do you agree to this? this record he says yes ya Rabb. because in his heart he just wants this to finish why someone tell me because the big deeds are not there the big bad deeds so he goes khalas they haven't seen the other one I can you know this is good if I just get away with this I will accept the punishment for these alhamdulillah that those big ones are not here so he because I accept Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi A'rif, I know. So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, but I have forgiven you your sins and turned the bad deeds into good deeds. So he says, Ya Rabb, but there was bigger sins than that in the record. Like since you're changing it to good deeds, change those ones as well so that the weight becomes more. In another hadith, this is the one I was, hadith bitaqa. The scroll is opened and 99 sigils, 99 scrolls. Each one so far as the eye can see. Can you imagine every utterance you've uttered is recorded? So this is everything you've seen, it is recorded. Every step you take, it is recorded. Your hand moves to take the bottle, it is recorded. Yeah, you know that. Of judgment. What type of book is this, Ya Rabb? It doesn't miss the small or the big, everything is recorded. So the sigils open 99, and this person doesn't have a single good deed. It's just all sins. So Allah Rabbul Izza. Tells him, he says, my servant, there's a good deed recorded in your name for us. Like in our records, there's a good deed you have as well. So the man thinks, I have 99 scrolls of bad deeds. What's a good deed going to do? So Allah Rabbul Izza says, la zulm al -yawm. There's no zulm today. Today is a day of justice. <coughs> so put the 99 sigils on the scale of sayyat and we will put this bitaqa this little parchment in which you have said la ilaha illallah once mukhlisan on one side so Allah Rabbul Izza orders for the one hasana for the iman for the la ilaha illallah to be put on the one side and the 99 sigils on the other and la ilaha illallah defeats it all so he says, enter my servant into my Jannah. Do you, do you see the value of, of Iman? Do you see the value of a single utterance of belief with a, with a pure heart in Allah Rabbul Izza? In another hadith, Abu, Abu Dharr al-Ghifari is sitting. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man qala la ilaha illallah mukhlisan dakhal al-Jannah. Whoever says la ilaha illallah with full ikhlas, full belief in Allah Rabbul Izzah, he will enter paradise. So the Sahabi, the, the Sahabi of the Rasul is there. He says, وَسَرَقَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Oh Prophet of Allah, what are you saying? Even if he commits adultery and steals. So the Rasul said, وَإِنْزَانَ وَسَرَقَ يَا أَبَا ذَرْ Even if he has committed, you know, the sin of adultery or stolen. So the Sahabi repeated, if even if he has committed adultery in, in sin and done the, you know, sin of zina, he goes, he, again the Prophet ﷺ repeated. And the third time he said, Ala وَإِنْ زَانَ وَسَرَقَ عَلَىٰ رَغْمِ أَنْفِكَ يَا أَبَاذَرْ He will enter paradise even if he has committed 
the act of zina and stolen, although you don't want it, O Abu Dhar, but Allah will enter him into Jannah. Ala rahmi anfik, and the Arabic means in dust be on your faces. And you know, when you want some, when you keep on pushing for something, and you, you know, when you lose the ground, it's embarrassing. So he goes, even all, although you're pushing and advocating for this, ala rahmi anfik, at your embarrassment, it will still happen. So my, my dear brothers, we are living in an abode of testing. Every step in life is a test. Remember this, your wealth is not a blessing unless it is used in the path of Allah. Your wealth is a test. Your poverty is not a curse, it is a test. Sickness doesn't mean Allah has, you know, taken away his it is a test every step of life is a test some are tested with wealth some are tested with sickness some are tested with poverty some are tested with fear some are tested with a woman some are tested with uh, with gambling some are everyone's got their test the good is the test and the bad is a test the good will you be thankful the bad will you abstain and at the end of it, death will come. Death, unanimous consensus. There's not a scientist on this planet. There's not a rabbi in the synagogues. There's not a priest in the churches. There's not an imam in the masjids. There's not a scientist in the universities that have any differences in this, that every person will die. Unanimous consensus. كل نفس ذائقة الموت. Every soul will die. Whoever has lived will die. The young will die. The elderly will die. The rich will die. The poor will die. The king will die. The servant will die. كل نفس كل نفس ذائقة الموت. Every soul will die. Now I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine a group of criminals, 20 or so criminals, they send you a little note, we are going to kill you. Do you know how you will live? You'll barricade the house. You know, when you go to sleep, you'll push the wardrobe next to the door so no one opens it. Your wife loses weight, you will go gray, you know, the. Criminals have said, I don't know what criminals you guys have here, but you know, I just خلاص, go there. The criminals have said they're going to kill me. This gang has said they're going to kill me. Forget about خلاص. Imagine a government tells you you're on a hit list of some government. Going to kill you, you know, secret uh, intelligence is coming. You, you shiver, you, you'll go gray. Oh my, you know, death is coming. Imagine you're, you're due for execution. Yeah, they don't tell you the date when they're going to execute you. They say, Khalas, this person should be executed. I don't know if you have capital punishment in this country. You don't have it anymore. So if you're in America and so on, they have capital punishment. So you're on death row. You're waiting for death. You know what's coming. Every day, it's, it's a difficult day. Because why? A few humans have told you, you're going to die. Now no human, Allah Rabbul Azza tells you, Kullu nafsin that you will die. I will kill you. <laughs> yeah, and you're living like you're not gonna die. Ajib that, don't you think? Huh? If a human tells you you're gonna die, you, you'll be. A doctor tells you you got three months to live. You go, oh, yo, yo, three months. Just three months. Do you understand? Now Allah Rabbul Azza tells you, says, "Kullu nafsin, you you will die. Kullu nafsin ذائقة maut. You're oblivious to it, but you will die." There's no escaping of death. Qala subhana, قُلْ لَنْ يَنْفَعَكُمُ الْفِرَارُ Say running away will not help you. إِنْ فَرَرْتُمْ مِنَ الْمَوْتِ أَوِ الْقَتْلِ وَإِذَا لَا تُمَتَّعُونَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا If you run from death or you hide from it, you won't get far away. Where are you going to run from, from death? Huh? There's no running from death. يُدْرِكُمُ الْمَوْتُ وَلَوْ كُنْتُمْ فِيهِ بُرُوجٍ مُشَيَّدًا 
Say death will catch you even if you make fortified towers and put yourselves in the tower and surround yourselves by guards and surround yourselves by infrared and put rockets and missiles in. Yeah, death will still catch you there. Subhanallah. Can you imagine an aeroplane is flying thousands of feet above the ground and the man goes, uh, 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 heart attack, dies. The uh, man tells me he had a heart attack. I said, nah, the angel came and got him. قُلْ يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ الَّذِي وُكِّلَ بِكُمْ Say that angel, that secret assassin assigned for you will come and get you. There's no hiding from death. If you could hide from death, the aeroplane would have been a safe place. Why is a person dying there? If you could hide from the air, death, submarine would have been a safe place. Why do you die in a submarine? If you, die, if you could hide from death, hospitals would have been a safe place. Why are they dying there? You've got everything you need there. Yeah, death will come. أينما تكونوا wherever you are يدرككم الموت ولو كنتم في بروج مشيدة. So remember this: life starts, the test starts when the ruh comes in the body. You become accountable for that at the age when you reach maturity for your deeds. It ends the day you see the angel and death comes to take you. This is the first step of the journey of the soul. It comes to you at inception, you know, 120 days after that. It leaves you at death. From this, insha'Allah, onwards, you know, where you're in the grave and then the akhirah and so on and so forth, we will cover in, in the rest of our lectures, insha'Allah ta'ala. Um, but my dear brothers, um, it has been a pleasure uh, to come in and be amidst you. Uh, my Allah, Rabbul Azza, um, accept our efforts and yours. And I pray that uh, this little reminder, uh, first of all, benefits uh, myself um, and, then, and then my dear brothers. Um, brethren, remember death regularly. Death is the, death is the examination paper. Do you understand? It's like a student doesn't recognize there's an exam coming, so he lives in fun. But when, when you see it, do, uh, you know, you want, to, you want to play, you want to muck around, you want to do this and that, but you go, no exam is tomorrow. Do you understand me? When the realization comes very close, you will become a better student the more you remember the exam. So what we used to do when we were kids, we used to have a calendar and we used to cross days off. You know, 10 days to the exam, 6 days to the exam, because it used to motivate you to study more. Yeah, the scholars tell us, and the hadith tell us, remember death regularly. It will regulate your lives. Don't think you will live forever. That's, that's a very silly way to live. To live thinking, I will live forever, it's a very inefficient way to live. Live remembering death that will maximize your efforts on righteousness and in life. Amidst, the, amidst the, the stories of the Salaf, they used to remember death in abundance. Uh, one of them, and this is not an encouragement to anyone, uh, he had dug a, a hole in, in one of the rooms of his house uh, in the shape of a grave. So whenever he used to feel that he's distanced too far from the memory of death, he used to go and lie in that grave to visualize death. And then he used to come out of it and say, thank you, Ya Rabb, for giving me a second chance. Do you see how it was very important for them to, to keep death right in front, that any moment I could die, I must be ready for the meeting of my Lord. That type of person lives a very different life compared to the one who is oblivious of death. So the hadith told us, increase in the remembrance of the destroyer of pleasures. You know, there's, there's a girl you're chasing in haram and um, your, your, your whole focus and mission has become that. 
yeah, and towards that you might commit a dozen haram. Visualize death, bring death. It will make it very clear for you what you need to do. You're in a haram business, yeah, you have money on the, imagine death, just, just visualize it. Put yourself, say I'm in the grave, they're putting sand on me, am I ready for this? Is, is this? is this good for me? It will make things very, life will become very clear if death is staring at you in the face. So remember death regularly. Parts of the things that will help you is to go to the, to the, to the graves once in a while, especially when you make dua for them. And just look, see what type of graves are there in the graveyard. Some are there, 14 year old person, 16 year old person. I just heard from my brother, 32 year old, 32 is young. 32 year old man fell down, dead. No warning, healthy, alhamdulillah, well, good family, everything. Death comes. What's the guarantee that you will leave here or I will leave here and I won't have a heart attack down there or a car won't hit me or a rock won't fall on me or the ground won't swallow me or something, do you understand? What guarantee do you have over your lives? Kings, kings lose this. Young, young son I was watching. Yeah, a beautiful, handsome, handsome young man died. Son of a king, young man, like youth is sparkling out of him. And the father with all the kingdom can't stop the death. What guarantee do me and you have that tomorrow will be ours? So my dear brothers, any opportunity that Allah has given you, rejoice and celebrate in it. Use it to its maximum. Repent to your Lord regularly. You will sin. كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمَ خَطَّعَ we will sin, we will sin. This is, you know, we are weak. But as soon as you sin, fall down in sajda and start repenting to Allah. Rabbi. Make tawbah in awbah in istighfar. Say, Ya Rabb, tub to ilayk. Ya Rabb, oh Allah, I'm sorry. And understand this. Wa rabbuka al zul rahma. And your Lord is oft forgiving, most merciful. This is enough for you. When Allah Rabbul Izza says, غضبي أصيب بها من يشاء ورحمتي وسعت كل شيء My punishment will reach whoever it chooses, but my mercy will cover everything. That's enough for you. You have enough hope to turn in tawbah to Allah Rabbul Izza. ويريد الله أن يتوب عليكم And Allah wants to accept your tawbah. So just, just make tawbah. And min la The one who repents from the sin is like he has never committed it. Isn't that sufficient? So make your tawbah in over and my Allah Rabbul Izza granted qabul. And in your du'as, remember this uh, poor soul uh, as well. And my Allah Rabbul Izza forgive me and you and overlook our shortcomings and uh, forgive our sins and join us together insha'Allah ta'ala in firdaus al-a'la. Uh, what a blessing it will be to see your faces there and we meet each other and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is there. Um, the Arabs say a beautiful thing. They say, Ahzanu qalbi la tazool hatta ubashara bil qabool wa ra'a kitabi bil yameen wa taqarra'ayni bil rasool. The anxieties of my heart will persist until I am given the glad tidings of acceptance, my book and my right and my eyes on the rasool. Ah, imagine the joy. Your book is given in your right and the Rasul is there. Ah, khalas, my Allah, Rabbul Izzah, resurrect us with the Prophet. But for our, because of our love for him, although our deeds are short, فَقُلْتُ مَا قُلْتُ إِن تَكُوا حَسَنَةً فَمِنَ اللَّهُ وَإِن تَكُوا سَيَّةً فَمِنَ نَفْسِي وَالشَّيْطَانُ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ Alhamdulillah, we are happy to announce the launch of the One Islam TV app. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets, and so much more. Two new videos uploaded daily, insha'Allah. Watch videos on demand, or download videos and watch offline. No more annoying ads or pop-ups. 100% safe browsing for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest, or drive with your device switched off. 
One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means the small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you. As we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. So you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.